There is a certain poetic justice in scientific history. In the late twentieth century, the out-of-Africa theory was wielded like a sword. It was not simply a scientific hypothesis, it became a crusade. Its champions announced that the fossil record in Africa was conclusive, that mitochondrial Eve sealed the case, that any theory that disagreed was pseudoscience supported by outdated ideas. The message was clear. Modern humans burst triumphantly from Africa 50,000 years ago, sweeping aside archaic populations in a single replacement event. And anyone who questioned that narrative was either behind the times or dangerously contrarian. For decades, dissenting voices were silenced, sidelined and smeared, especially any scientists outside of the British American system. But now the tables have turned. It is out of Africa that stands exposed, built on fragile assumptions, distorted baselines and circular reasoning. And nothing drives the blade in deeper than a mitochondrial and nuclear DNA study by Arneson and Hallstrom, a study whose conclusions do not merely challenge the traditional model, but if correct, obliterate it. These are not fringe scientists. They are two of the top geneticists in the world, from Lund University in Sweden, one of the top scientific universities in Europe. This study also aligns with the results of the 2025 Yunxian study, which suggests a Eurasian origin for Homo sapiens one million years ago, including a 400,000-year-old Eurasian lineage that ends with Cro-Magnon in Europe. Exposing the flaws of out of Africa, or into Eurasia, as some prefer to call it, is not an attack on Africa. In fact, it elevates Africa from a mere cradle, where humans had their infancy to a region part of a fully unified Afro-Eurasian supercontinent. It elevates early Homo sapiens in Eurasia from failed migrations to successful, stable Afro-Eurasian populations. As the study concludes, the results are consistent with the paleontologically established presence of Homo erectus in Eurasia, a Eurasian divergence between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor 850,000 years ago, a divergence between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals and Denisovans 800,000 years ago, a mitochondrial DNA introgression from Homo sapiens into Neanderthals 500,000 years ago, and a Eurasian divergence among the ancestors of modern Homo sapiens 250,000 years ago with the exodus of the Mbuti Khoisan into Africa. The study shows that Eurasia was not the receiver, but the donor in Homo sapiens' evolution. The findings that humans left Africa as Homo erectus and returned as Homo sapiens sapiens constitute a change in the understanding of Homo sapiens' evolution to one that conforms to the extensive Eurasian record of Homo sapiens' paleontology and archaeology. This study does what other scientists could never fully achieve. It unleashes a genome-level demolition of the African origin thesis by letting the phylogenetic tree draw itself, free of preconceived African rooting. When you watch that tree form naturally, without being forced into an African frame, something astonishing happens. The story of Homo sapiens erupts from Eurasia, not Africa. African diversity becomes evidence of repeated Eurasian back-migrations, not ancestral purity. The deepest human splits form across continents, not within Africa alone. According to the study, the Yoruba of West Africa, the supposed template of the ancestral African population, emerge as the recipients of ancient Eurasian lineages. Khoisan become not the oldest Africans, but the earliest returning Eurasians. And the Mbuti, long held up as a relic of primordial Africa, split so deeply from other Africans that their ancestry must predate the very population thought to have launched humanity into the world. What emerges is not a corrected out-of-Africa model, but the complete annihilation of that model. It collapses not because of ideology, but because the data refuse to support it. The fatal crack begins with out-of-Africa's most sacred axiom, the assumption of a single unified ancestral African population. For 40 years, nearly every genetic and demographic model has required Africa to have been a single panmictic reservoir of modern humans, one vast, semi-connected genetic pool from which all humans ultimately diverged. 
This simplifying assumption was necessary because the entire Out of Africa narrative depended on comparing one African population, almost always Yoruba, against non-Africans and interpreting the differences as evidence of a single clean divergence. But Arneson and Hallstrom did not begin by assuming that Yoruba represent a primordial human. They did not assume that Africa was unified. They did not force the tree to root itself in the continent. Instead, they compared Mbuti, also known as African Pygmies, Khoisan, also known as African Bushmen, Yoruba and Lund, a Swedish genome, and let the sequences determine the deepest split. The results are devastating. The deepest separation among modern humans is not between Africans and Eurasians, but between Mbuti and a Eurasian lineage. And when Khoisan are added, they join the Mbuti branch, forming a deep African clade, that stands outside the cluster containing both Yoruba and non-Africans. Even worse for out of Africa, Yoruba sequences immediately split, some aligning with the Eurasian branch. Africa is not a root. There is no single African origin population. There is no clean African ancestor. The entire foundational structure of out of Africa collapses. The interpretation that flows from this structure is radical, but unavoidable. The earliest modern human population, the one that precedes all others, did not arise in Africa at all. The Mbuti and Khoisan represent not an African origin, but the oldest Eurasian expansion into Africa. They are the descendants of a deep lineage that branched off early within Eurasia and then moved southward during one of the major interglacial windows. Their basal position in the phylogeny no longer means that Africa birthed them, it means that the earliest dispersals from Eurasia reached Central and Southern Africa long before later populations like Yoruba arrived. This completely rewrites the meaning of ancient African lineages, revealing them as Eurasian in origin. Nowhere is the blow to out of Africa more direct than in the analysis of Yoruba, the group that has been used again and again as the proxy for ancestral Homo sapiens. For two decades, Yoruba genomes have been treated as the African standard against which all non-Africans are measured. This standardized comparison produced the illusion that Eurasian populations diverged from an African baseline. But the arneson hallstrom study shows that Yoruba are not a single unitary population at all. Yoruba sequences split between the African hunter-gatherer clade and the Eurasian-derived branch. In other words, Yoruba carry ancient Eurasian ancestry older than the supposed out-of-Africa dispersal. Even more damning, the study identifies two separate Yoruba migrations into Africa at roughly 225,000 and 180,000 years ago, long before the canonical 70,000-year exit. If Eurasians were migrating into Africa at 225,000 years ago, how could Africa simultaneously be the exclusive birthplace of Homo sapiens at that time? This alone detonates the replacement-based out-of-Africa model. Yoruba are not ancestral Africans. They are descendants of much later Eurasian inflows layered onto older African hunter-gatherer populations. Every single out-of-Africa demographic model that uses Yoruba as the baseline is fatally flawed because it assumes Yoruba represent unadmixed ancestral Africa when they demonstrably do not, according to the study. The Mbuti and Khoisan populations fare no better for the out-of-Africa thesis. For years they have been held up as the oldest surviving human lineages, the deepest genetic branch of our species, living relics of humanity's primordial phase. But their position in the tree, paired with Mbuti, reveals something very different. They are the descendants of an early Eurasian lineage that entered Africa long before Yoruba populations arrived. Their high mitochondrial diversity does not indicate an African origin. Instead, it reflects long-term isolation following an early entry. Their nuclear DNA confirms that their depth predates the Afro-Eurasian split assumed by out of Africa. The Khoisan are not the root of humanity. They are the oldest backflow from Eurasia, an inversion of the story that out of Africa has preached for decades. This reinterpretation extends beyond Africa, the study dismantles the assumed African phasing of Neanderthal, Denisovan, and Homo sapiens divergence. 
Mainstream models position the split between Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis at roughly 700,000 years ago, rooted via African fossils. But the phylogenetic analysis shows that Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor form sister groups within Eurasia, and that the divergence among Neanderthals, Denisovans and Homo sapiens took place entirely outside Africa. This aligns with the fossil record, which has never produced a Neanderthal or Denisovan specimen in Africa and has consistently located their ancestors in Eurasia for over a million years. Out-of-Africa proponents have long ignored this discrepancy, insisting on hypothetical African ancestors for Neanderthals that have never been found. The mitochondrial introgression event discovered in Neanderthals, dated to around 500,000 years ago, further proves that Homo sapiens already existed in Eurasia at that time. There is no African evidence conclusively supporting Homo sapiens at 500,000 years ago. There is such a record in Eurasia. Out of Africa can only survive by ignoring these contradictions. The Eurasian origin model absorbs them effortlessly. The climatic logic of human evolution also falls into place once the tree is allowed to root in Eurasia rather than Africa. The study identifies Eurasian glacial cycles as the primary drivers of modern human population contractions and expansions. Warm periods around 250,000, 225,000, 180,000 and 125,000 years ago unleashed expansions of Homo sapiens populations that radiated into Africa in successive waves. Africa's greater genetic diversity is therefore not the signature of an ancestral homeland. It is the residue of multiple Eurasian dispersals entering different regions of Africa at different times. Africa becomes a genetic palimpsest, a continent repeatedly overwritten by Eurasian migrants, each carrying different lineages, each adding complexity. This is a coherent explanation for why African populations are genetically diverse. They are mosaics, not origins. The diversity is cumulative, not primal. The out-of-Africa model, when pressed to explain this, simply breaks. It has never convincingly explained why Africa supposedly generated enormous diversity in less than 200,000 years, while simultaneously exporting an extremely homogeneous group to Eurasia. It has never explained why Neanderthals, Denisovans and their predecessors appear exclusively in Eurasia, yet all supposedly spring from African ancestors who left no trace in Africa. It has never explained why the earliest modern features appear in Chinese fossils, like the 950,000-year-old Yunxian, or why the hominin with the most modern facial structure in the early Middle Pleistocene is the 900,000-year-old Spanish Homo antecessor, far older than any African skull resembling Homo sapiens. The out-of-Africa theory has always been an exercise in trying to force contradictory data into a story that no longer fits. Arneson and Hallstrom's study removes the force and lets the tree speak, and when the tree speaks, it tells a story of Eurasian origins, Eurasian diversification, and Eurasian dispersal back into Africa. It transforms African diversity from sacred evidence of origin into a testament to repeated migrations and demographic layering. It gives the Mbuti and Khoisan their rightful place as the earliest offshoots of an ancient Eurasian population. It reveals Yoruba as latecomers carrying deep Eurasian ancestry. It exposes Africa as a mosaic of returning lineages, not the birthplace of our species. It removes the artificial African root from the tree, and shows that once the scaffolding of assumption is stripped away, the entire out-of-Africa edifice implodes. In the end, the irony is complete. Out-of-Africa tried to destroy the competing theories by insisting that humans had a single origin. But the real data now show what others long suspected. Humanity did not arise from a single African cradle but from a structured, ancient Eurasian network of populations whose descendants spread into Africa in waves long before the Holocene. The sword sharpened to destroy competing theories has turned in the wielder's own hand. Out of Africa has fallen on the blade it forged. The 2020 study from Sweden did not simply challenge the paradigm. It may have delivered the fatal blow. In the end, out of Africa will be remembered as a power grab by Cold War British-American scientists who wanted to control the narrative of human evolution and silence everyone else, 
to monopolize archaeological funding in East Africa. Thanks for watching.